Monotonicity is the second of the great pillars in mathematics. Together with additivity, it explains and makes transparent many, many, many subtle ideas. At its heart, it looks trite, almost banal. So, here is a basic question. Suppose you have two events, A and B. Remember, events are subsets of the sample space. Suppose, additionally, that A is a subset of B. What can we then say about the respective probabilities of A and B? Naturally enough, we want to say that A has got a smaller probability than B. And to begin, let's look at a picture. A picture is always useful as a device to clarify objects. Imagine a sample space, an event B, and an event A safely ensconced inside B. Now, as a first step in the process, remember all we have available uh, to do our analysis are three axioms, positivity, additivity, and normalization. Uh, so let's start with the event B. We can decompose the elements of B into two types. If an element is in B, either that element is in A, or it is not in A but in B. In other words, any element of B is of one of two distinct types. It must belong to A, or it must belong to B minus A. And so we have an identity. We have decomposed B into the union of two disjoint pieces, A and B minus A. Manifestly, anything in B minus A cannot be in A. You have explicitly excluded, eschewed all the elements of A in B minus A. But now, B has been decomposed into a union of two disjoint pieces, and additivity immediately tells us that this probability must be the sum of the constituent probabilities. Very good. But now let's take a look at the second term on the right, the probability of the event B minus A, the things outside A and in the annulus between A and B. Now, we don't know much about this probability, except that it is a probability. And the positivity axiom tells us that whatever this is, this must be non-negative. And therefore, on the right-hand side, I've got the probability of A added to a non-negative quantity. If we eliminate, throw away that non-negative quantity, it can only decrease the value of the right-hand side. And therefore, via the positivity axiom, we come to the natural and again inevitable conclusion that if A is a subset of B, then the probability of A can be no larger than the probability of B. All of this really was a codification of the basic idea that the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. An immediate consequence of this is the following observation. Any event A is a subset of omega. By definition, any event has to be a subset. By monotonicity, then, the probability of any event A cannot exceed the probability of omega. But all probabilities are non-negative. So in the bookend, we have an inequality zero. And the probability of omega by normalization is one. And therefore, we conclude, without further ado, that all probabilities are bounded between zero and one. Again, notice that this is intuitive. One is tempted to make this a part of the axiomatic structure, but it is not necessary. This is an inevitable consequence of our spare axioms of positivity, normalization, and additivity. Now, monotonicity looks really trite, I, I admit, but it has deep and subtle consequences. We will see some as we go along, but let me start by showing you one identity we can churn out using monotonicity. This is called Boole's inequality, or also called the union bound. And the idea is, what can you say about the relative value of the probability of A union B with respect to the probabilities of A and B? So in this setting, if we have a Venn diagram, a and B are generic sets, and so they don't necessarily have any inclusion relationship. So you might have some kind of display like this, where A and B live happily in their own spheres of influence, and they have some overlap. 
Now, let's begin by looking at A union B. Now, A union B is the sum total of the elements that are in A or in B or in both. And to try to use additivity, we try to find a decomposition of A union B. And there are many ways we could do this, but here's one way. We can write A union B as A together with whatever is left out. And what is left out? Well, it's that sliver, that crescent, B minus A. And therefore, we decompose A union B as A together with B minus A. Now, by the construction, it is clear that A and B minus A share no elements. In other words, their intersection is empty. They are disjoint sets. And by construction, it's apparent that B minus A, that sliver, is a subset of B. What we have thrown out is, of course, what is common to A and B, the intersection of A and B. Now, with these observations under our belt, we can immediately write the probability of A union B as the probability of A plus the probability of B minus A. This is additivity. But the probability of B minus A is no larger than the probability of B by monotonicity. And we immediately get a beautiful and elegant inequality. The probability of A union B is no larger than the sum of the probabilities of A and B. Only experience will teach a student that simple inequalities like these are more than worth the price of admission. Right? These are much more useful typically than ponderous and condition-bound inequalities which require pages of, worth, of work to elucidate. Let's start with this and immediately see what else we can do with this kind of idea. Right? So to begin, we've got Boole's inequality. The probability of a union is no larger than the sum of two probabilities. What can we say now about the probability of the union of three elements? Pause the lecture and see if we can make headway on this. Restart when you're ready. All right. So our idea is going to be to try to decompose A union B union C. And we'd like to use what we already know about the probability of the union of two elements. So let's try the following decomposition. Group a union B together as one set and take its union with C. Of course, we can do unions in any grouping we like whatsoever. This is the associative property of unions, right? Just like additions. You can do them in any order you like. Now, on the right, you've got the probability of the union of two objects in round brackets A union B with C. Right? Boole's inequality applied to these two objects. Think of A union B standing in the place of A and C standing in the place of B, and we write down a sum of two probabilities. This is just Boole's inequality for two elements. But of course, the probability of A union B, we know, is no larger than the sum of the probabilities of A and B. And immediately we've got a very natural looking inequality. The probability of the union of three elements is no larger than the sum of the three individual probabilities. What about four? Well, the argument unfolds in almost exactly the same way. Group three of them together into one unit. Take it, the union of that with the fourth unit. Use Boole's inequality. Write down a sum of two probabilities. And then for the probability of the union of three elements, we already have discovered that this is no larger than the sum of three probabilities. And so Bob's your uncle. There you go. And of course, now we see an inductive process at work. And without further ado, we can write down the general formula. The probability of the union of n events, however they are constituted, is no larger than the sum of the individual probabilities. Again, this is a political age, so we need a slogan to keep us going. So here's our slogan. The probability of a union of events is no larger than the sum of event probabilities. This is the content of Boole's inequality also called the union bound for natural reasons.